friends, this is Janine Pettit, founder of Girl Camper and Camp Co. Ambassador. We want you to know life really is better at the campsite and Camp Co. makes so many things to make life at the campsite safe and fun. I've just arrived at the campground and I'm getting ready to plug my voltage protector in. I want to do this first before I unhitch to make sure this pole is good before I go to all that trouble. The next thing I want to make sure is that I have the right size. This is a 30 amp. My trailer is a 30 amp. Sometimes though we get to the campground and our pole doesn't have the option of 30 or 50 amp, in which case we are gonna need a dog bone. So this will take our electric from 50 amps and allow us to plug it in here to converting it to a 30 amp. So I would plug this in, the dog bone, and now I'm plugging my 50 amp in here, but it's reducing the flow of electricity down to 30 amps for me. So voltage protector and the dog bone, just keep this thing with you in case you need it. Some campgrounds have both and some don't. I've just arrived and I'm setting up my site and guess what? I'm just a little off and so I'm gonna use the Camco Fasten to level out this trailer. Let me show you how they work these things are so easy to store. So they stack up like this, and then we have this little handle that simply untwists. I pull those out, and then I can pull off as many as I need. I'm just the tiniest bit off, so I'm gonna set these up here behind my camper, and I'm just going to drive up and raise this thing just the littlest bit. So I've stacked them, and they're interlocking. I'm gonna back the trailer up and I'm gonna sit right on top of that and it's gonna level me off. I place my Camco wheel chock right under my rear wheel here. I'm not putting it on the other side because I have a leveler going there. So what I'm doing now is placing this in here. I give it a good kick to make sure it's really wedged in there. You do not wanna disconnect your coupler from the ball until you make sure you have that in place. Even a slight slope can send your RV rolling down the hill and into the lake. Wheel chalk. And now I am going to disconnect from the hitch. I'm traveling with my weight distribution bars on, so the third thing I want to do is raise up my hitch here to take the pressure off those bars. I am leaving my coupler down until I get my weight distribution bars off. I use the R3 Recurve Ease Lift weight distribution hitches. These are a dream for girl campers. I had a different kind before that had to be shoved up from underneath and I just didn't always possess the arm strength I needed for that. These drop in from the top. There is an easy safety pin here that you push a button and you pull it straight out. I don't have to worry about having a pin with me and losing that pin and it's on a wire so I can't lose it. Now I'm gonna raise this up. If I raise it up high enough, I shouldn't even need the tool to get it off. It should pop right out, but there is a clever little tool. And you can see this is relieving the pressure from the bars and it's going to slide right out. Okay, I've got this thing up pretty high and I've removed the pin and I should be able to apply just a little bit of pressure and that comes out. I got it out on both sides. Now I've got both of my bars detached from my RV and I'm gonna pull this all the way in this direction and I'm gonna lift it right out. That easy. Now I'm gonna lower this again and detach my coupler and I'm ready to go. Look how much that truck came down. There we go, disconnection. Now that my coupler is off the ball, I'm gonna pull my truck forward and then I'm gonna level my trailer front to back. I know I already have my trailer leveled side to side and I wanna level it front to back. So I'm just gonna lower down my jack, throw my little leveling tool on there and then I'm gonna be ready to drop my stabilizing jacks. I have got my trailer leveled front to back and it's unhitched, I've got my wheel chocks. The last thing I do before I begin the plugging in of the electric and the water is to drop my stabilizing jacks. 
I like to sit them on my fasten blocks because I don't want them to shift around in the ground. I don't want mud on them. So I make sure I put a couple of blocks underneath them and then I turn until I hit resistance and then I give it another little quarter turn. A stabilizing jack is meant to stabilize your camper. You don't want to put weight on it. It is not a weight distribution. So just give it a half a crank after you hit resistance and you're good to go. The other little tip I have for you is to take some neon colored duct tape and fasten it onto your hand crank because when you lay this thing down, it's so easy to lose it. Put that tape on there and then when you scan the campsite to make sure you haven't forgotten anything, it's going to blink at you. I have just hooked up my Rhino Extreme Hose. Now this campsite I'm at has full hookups so I can keep my sewer hose connected. I want to share with you a misnomer about sewer hoses. Once you connect your sewer hose to your site, you don't want to open your sewer valve. You want to make sure you have enough fluid going in your tanks that when you dump them, it washes everything out. So go ahead and hook up your sewer hose at a full um, hookup site, but don't open those valves until there is enough fluid in your tanks to flush them out, then close them back up again. I have been using the Rhino Extreme Hose for four years now, and this thing is built to last. There's a couple of little features in this I want to share with you that I really love. And one of them is these little nozzles that they have along the outside. Most manufacturers only have two, but a Rhino Extreme has four. That allows your hand to grip it no matter what funny angle you might be at. Now, my hose here is a 10-foot hose. Sometimes you get lucky at the campsite and your sewer plug-in is nearby. Sometimes it's far away and you need an extension. So I'm gonna hook these two together and I'm gonna keep turning until I hear that click that we love. That means that thing is not coming apart. And this is where those four little knobs come in so handy. Click, it's on. So now I'm gonna walk this down to my sewer receptacle here and I'm gonna show you how I keep it weighted so it doesn't pop up. I love it when Campco solves a camping problem and this is one we can all relate to. How many of you have searched the campground for that big rock to put down on top of your sewer hose? So when you pull that release lever from 10 feet away, this thing doesn't pop up and make a mess nobody wants to clean up. So Campco has developed their weighted sewer hose and it goes right on top here and that thing is not going anywhere. Fun fact about these, they come in two colors, blue and orange, and they have a reflective tape going around them, so you're not gonna trip over this in the middle of the night. But I'll tell you what girl campers are doing, they're buying it and spray painting them and decorating them to match their own campers. So here I am at the campground. I've got my water pressure regulator, I've got my filter, and I've got my Evo Flex hose. I wanna tell you a little bit about each one of these things. First of all, I would never hook up without a water pressure regulator, and here is why. Here at this campground, we have a spigot here that is controlled by a hand lever, as opposed to a twisted knob. It's not as easy to control the water flow coming out from one of these. The water pressure regulator is gonna tell me the PSIs, the pounds per square inch of pressure going through that hose. So I can pull this up and watch it, I know that my camper has a recommendation of no more than 60 PSIs coming into the camper. If it was a lot more water pressure, you could damage your piping and you wanna be careful of something like that. Now, the water filter. At a campsite, you don't know where your water is actually coming from. Some of them might have a lovely deep well, some of them may have a water system that maybe you don't particularly trust. This particular one is a KDF carbon filter. So the carbon is what filters your water and the KDF is what keeps bacteria from growing in this thing when you have it stored. So both of those things are important. How many of you have had a water hose that will not bend where you want it to go? So the EvoFlex hose here has no memory. It's super flexible and it goes however you want. And when it is then pulled out, it doesn't keep that shape. So you can see how flexible this hose is. And so when you want to wrap it up, it's so much easier to do. So this is my setup when I'm at a campground. I've got my water regulator, I've got my water filter, 
and I've got my easy breezy EvoFlex hose. Life is really better at the campsite.